For April the 15th, 2016, we talk about VR delays, a brief bit about Dark Souls 3, and we ask you about the games you anticipated the most in the past. Welcome to Level 146. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Meismith. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Thank you so much, all of the hosts here, for joining. And thank you, listeners, uh, for joining uh, for joining us on this very special week. Uh, this is uh, this is a time where something we've been we've been waiting for for a long time uh, has a uh, uh, you know for for, for 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 some of us has arrived but for others of us you know it feels like it's right on the tip of the tongue right you know it's just like it's just about about to get here tell us about that Dennis uh yeah so this is a, a game called Parenthood uh, no. <laughs> yep. it's a sequel uh, it's a sequel yeah it, it is a sequel um I've is it free people- to play. Uh, it, well, it depends. It's it's kind of pay to win in some cases. <laughs> but uh, I've heard people say that the sequel is markedly harder than the original. Um, oh, harder! So, wow, I thought yeah. like no, I thought that like since you had all the all the old uh, all the old equipment, it would be like backward compatible. Yeah, there's, well, there's yeah, less... yeah. You you can you can twink <laughs> the new character. There's less <laughs> grinding for equipment, but there's a higher skill cap in terms of. Um, playing defense you're kind of going from a two-on-one scenario to a man-to-man uh so that's uh i heard, I heard the third one has an autoplay feature yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you can kind of start having uh having your bots taking care of bots and, and you're good there uh, yeah but yeah we are we are we're really the... impressed how long we kept that going <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody let's get a big round of applause to us <laughs> Yeah, so last last episode in all likelihood um, before Milo, baby number two, arrives on the scene. Yeah, uh, so we are in any day now mode, and if you hear yelling in the background, and then I'm suddenly gone, you'll know what happened. <laughs> I, Dennis, I would like to think that if that was the case, and you were rushing off to the hospital, you, <laughs> we would at least explain, like, hey, you know, nope. <laughs> just like mysteriously. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how so- sudden was the pregnancy? <laughs> but uh yeah so so it's exciting times uh we're feeling ready to go we're excited to meet him um mm-hmm. and uh excited for luke to meet him because i'm sh- he has no clue what's about to hit him like <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna hit this guy like a train yeah this is all theoretical yes <laughs> but uh he's 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 in his new big boy room mm. um and made that transition very easily um which we were prepared for the worst and then he just kind of was cool with it so that's nice. Um, but other than that, like he's I, I don't think he really has much of a concept. He says baby and swings his arms back and forth like he's rocking a baby. Yeah. Uh, and I think in his mind, that is what baby means is mm. a hand motion. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, but exciting times. Yeah. See, it's it's weird for me being an only child because I've like no insight into that that element of this whatsoever. <laughs> yeah it's it's basically a punching bag um that you get a younger sibling uh you just have to make sure mom and daddy aren't around well, at least yeah. that's how it was for me oh so. oh yeah m- like m- m- most definitely and as 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 the younger of two brothers um i i you know i had the delightful experience of not only ruining somebody's life just by being born but being reminded <laughs> of it pretty much every other day yeah <laughs> And God forbid your older sibling is into WWE because then every new wrestling move gets tested on you. And yeah, <laughs> you do. I, I, I forget you were you, you're the oldest, right, Dennis? I'm I'm like the pseudo oldest. So I have an older brother and an older sister right. um, yes. that are like way older. Yeah, there's there's a healthy gap there. The torment there was more emotional than physical. Exactly. Uh, and and then I am the oldest of a, another tight group of of siblings yeah. of which i was used to the tormentor versus the tormentee <laughs> more physical than emotional you, were, you, were, you, you <laughs> yeah. were the warden i like to think it was a bright kid and i had a good balance of both you know <laughs> there <laughs> multi-classing <laughs> that's right <laughs> oh it's it's all about flavor profiles of pain yes exactly yeah <laughs> well i hope it goes without saying but we wish both you and your lovely lovely wife and your son uh the the current one the best Mm-hmm. Thank you, guys. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Uh, do we have any other banter at the start here? That was pretty. I thought that was pretty high quality banter right there. I think so. Yeah. That like we're gonna put that one on the reel. Yeah, significant think... ban. <laughs> my banter checklist is all marked off, so I think yeah. we're good to go. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Look, kind of reconcile my list with yours. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Family stuff. Personal. Personal. Yep. Okay. Oh, a little bit of a game pun. thing. Miss yep. There we go. Pun. Oh shit. Someone um, scrum. Yeah. Uh, 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 I crossed off Benny Hill music because that doesn't really translate as much into podcasts. <laughs> it's it's specifically auditory. What what doesn't transfer is the uh, the well, fast, the, you can't the, speed up the talking. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the accompanying fast motion. Oh, I can I can speed up the talking. Yes, yeah, okay. say wait, that, right. that is something we can definitely do. Let's let's in the week that Dark Souls three come out, make this the most editing intensive podcast for Cole. Oh yeah, this oh. is going to be a fucking space opera. That's what we're going <laughs> to so, do. So did we establish last uh, last week that that this is uh, Dark Souls weave? <laughs> this, yes. this this is dark souls weave yeah no this uh for anybody listening listening to this posthumously mm, nah, let's let's steer yeah, away from posthumously that. yep okay yeah let's 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 rephrase that for anybody listening to this after the fact this is the uh the day that uh dark souls 3 uh came out like down to the day like i started playing at 8 a.m this morning and uh actually i stopped quite frequently because you know i've achieved a, a certain number, amount of balance in my life mm-hmm yeah, mm-hmm. and that's what separates me from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've made, I've made no secret that I'm better than everybody who listens to us. Fair uh, enough. Yeah, I but, I don't. So so, so so soundboard a little more robust. <laughs> so does that mean this this episode this is like you know an act of love too you know electric cola loo a little bit no like so <laughs> this different <laughs> th- sanity is what it is uh, yeah kind of like De- De- dennis has it right on the money like after you know so this is my third souls launch uh where i've been playing one of these games under the gun trying to get as much of it under my belt as possible um before you know we cover it on bonfire set chat because you want to you want to start your coverage kind of as soon as possible not like too soon before you really understand stuff but like you know this this first week you really need to get you you, you gotta play as much of it as you can and so like i've i've thrown some of this on here like i was like okay we're gonna do the level as opposed to skipping a week which we did that one time um i'm guesting on video games hot dog uh tomorrow uh yesterday as of the time this came out unless something else happened um yeah no you just need to have like these breaks put in because playing 60 hours of a game over the course of uh, five or six days is uh that is harrowing yeah yeah so does does getting written up on what was it TechCrunch or something like that count as a, a part of that uh, oh uh pc gamer they PC, uh there you go yeah yeah, no, that was uh, that that was delightful. Like people, uh, uh, fans and stuff, uh, tutored it at me, and I was like, "Oh, that is so nice." They yeah. uh, they, they called this a book club without the divorcees, um, and also <laughs> said yeah, that our no, that was my take on it. I think they were calling you out. You need to step <laughs> up your game. <laughs> well, well, no, Gary is divorced. <laughs> I, I won't defend our jokes as you know being good, but terrible. No, it was it was it was, it was delightful to be uh, again to like to be listed in you know in the. Uh, ranks of people like vati and epic name bro yeah. um and all the and all those folks like that is uh that is fantastic and i'm super hum super humbled and super honored by it yeah it's been a good week nice. let's uh, let's talk about some uh some more video games since yeah. that seems to be working out pretty well for us yeah let's do that let's uh let's let, let's follow that line so let's uh go on over we've got the usual kind of show for you this week we've got the brief the multiplayer and the grind and as usual we're going to start with the brief, the brief where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us uh let's see here uh ben what you got control m doesn't work um <laughs> uh, okay uh so the article i have is talking about the oculus rift and how there have been a lot of delays with it and it's not exactly having a great launch oh so, you scooped david <laughs> did i <laughs> yeah did, don't worry did david post this yeah i put it in the slack don't worry though no this worry is, this <laughs> is a fuck up big enough that we need two story segments to cover it uh, so 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 tell me more about it because i have i have not been i have not been following it uh, so basically, a lot of people pre-ordered the Oculus. Uh, it came out last month, I believe. Uh, I think we talked about it a couple weeks Clay ago. March, yeah. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people who pre-ordered it uh, apparently aren't going to get it as soon as they expected. Um, so some of the people who pre-ordered it, uh, shipping estimates for it were uh, delayed until about July or August time frame. 
So about three or four months from now. Oh, wow. Um, so apparently they're just behind on uh, on production. So Well, and I guess they've come out and said that there was a component shortage. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, one just... Yeah, that that is the thing and then also apparently um they misestimated the degree to which it would affect them Mm -hmm. so i don't know exactly what that means um like i i i don't know maybe maybe this is just like my specific grand of nerdiness i kind of wish i knew like what what they were short of but, yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I almost think it's to the point where to avoid them getting crucified, they almost need to be more specific, right? Like if they <laughs> if they just say we had a component shortage, that's that's on you, dog. If you can say like, you know, we were promised X of Y by company Z and they couldn't come through for us. Um, well, I don't know if that would show up as a cop out or just I mean, I don't know. If there's the full story. <laughs> so, like yeah, you know, like if their Chinese manufacturing plant like was attacked by ninjas, <laughs> yeah. but it was, I, I can't see that working out either way. Uh, not the ninja thing. That'd not be that, that'd ninjas. be that'd be no, fucking I mean... sweet. Uh, no, but you know, just imagine they say, okay, so this particular factory from this particular supplier under this particular holding company boned us over. Um, you're counting on components from them. This and if you true. throw them that under the true. bus, then it's like, well, fuck that. You know, that's that. That's terrible because we have just outed them as our supplier, um, and also made them sound unreliable. So we hurt their business. Well, um, and 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 also, if they come out and say like, yeah, it was totally these other people's fault. Like, dog, it doesn't matter. You need to own your supply chain. <laughs> like <laughs> it still reflects poorly on you because you're the name that is on this product. That is that that, that is making people wait. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, I, they are they're in trouble regardless. In their in their minor defense or their weak defense, uh, they fulfilled some of their orders, and the people who got their de- orders delayed, they're going to waive the shipping cost. Um, but as I said, that's kind of a weak defense. Yeah, so, I mean, there's only so much they can do, you know, and it's it, it's yeah. it's up to people to determine whether or not the weight is worth it to them. Like these are, these are early adopters. I, you know, and from what I understand the V, the V or the Vive, I've never really determined what the right pronunciation of that is. The Vi- <laughs> yeah. The Vivi um, is uh yeah. From uh, Final Fantasy nine, the, 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 the Vivi from Final Fantasy nine <laughs> um, is, uh, is, is similarly supply constrained. So there's not much else for them to go really? do. Although I what? didn't know that. I mean, not, not to are this they, degree. Well... But like they're they're, 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 yeah. they're backed up, so they they're supply constrained, but not a, to as an egregious and surprising amount. Maybe they're, they're, they're supply constrained, but not to the point where they have to renegotiate mm-hmm. um, <laughs> the, the 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 ship dates uh, for individual people. I just think that they were more conservative with with what they were promising. Yeah. Well, the the, <laughs> the other thing um, I think that um, the article I read kind of men- mentioned offhand is a lot of these, you know, pre-order people, early adopters, are people whose, uh, you know, job is to pre-order. So any delay, or is, I mean, rather is, you know, to review or, you know, do commentary, stuff like that. So any delay whatsoever effectively makes the product completely worthless. Oh, for them, because they they need it within a certain time period after launch. Right, exactly. Oh, that's, that's bizarre. If all of the if all of the units are being sent to people to review it, ostensibly to create review content for people who want to buy something they can't buy. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked. The like catch twenty two. Well, and, and the real people this bones over is all the people who have, you know, invested a significant amount of time and resources in developing a game for this, who suddenly will have no game sales. Yeah. True. Um. One one thing that I couldn't quite tell from the um. The uh, article I read was the degree to which, like, uh, people who pre-ordered slash, you know, like, you know, Kickstarter-y backers and, like, stuff like that got screwed over. Like, it's not, it's it's not clear to me whether this is, like, because I think it's worse if this is people that, like, big time, you know, supported them you know, before it was clear this was even going to be a thing. And it sounds mm-hmm. to me like maybe this is more just like 
the early adopters of the actual product, which is still kind of bullshit, but isn't, you know, isn't as bad. My understanding it is that people who bought the Kickstarter for the initial uh, d- dev kit one, they got their sure. dev kits uh, once, the, once, once they were all there, but also they got um, consumer versions as well. Like once it made its uh, big, uh, big break on the you know public scene. So I don't know if like maybe, maybe some of the shortage is them making good on their deal. If so good for them. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. sure. You know? Yeah. It's a uh, man. It's complicated. Yeah. I, I mean, my, my big concern is, I don't know. I this is the technology I really want to see, like, uh, be successful or at least have a you know have a legitimate shot at being successful. Rift, so, as opposed to any of the alternatives, or VR, as opposed to v- other VR technology? in general. Okay. And I, I don't, I don't think it's at a point in its development that I, I think they're all in it together. Mm. I'm just going to say there's been two botched launches of other technologies, so this sets up PlayStation to do it right. <laughs> I mean, prediction is coming true. It's all falling into place. What, what about the Microsoft boy. one? What was that, David? What about the Microsoft one? Oh, the uh, the, the the smart glass or whatever? Yeah. I, I feel like they should just name it the Microsoft one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're, 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 uh, they're being uh, conservative with uh, how they, how soon they release it. They, 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 in, in their words, they don't want it to be another connect. <laughs> yeah, well, their demo video promised something that would turn your living room into a wonderland, and it's just not going to work that way. So like, they, they've kind of set themselves up to the, fail. The Vive kind of did the same thing, and apparently the Vive is dope. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. In, yeah, in, in it, terms of it, room scale VR, yeah. It does seem like in terms of... Um, like press about games and stuff that the vibe is kind of killing it. I, I honestly haven't heard much about it from a gaming standpoint. Well, I all right, I should just say I guess games meaning software. The pre, press about things it does as opposed to what the company does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll watch this. I'm going to be curious to see because the Vive is a couple of weeks later than the Rift in terms of, you know, being open for pre-orders. Uh, they could still come out and disappoint people. True. Yeah. There's a lot of disappointment potential in this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see here. Dennis, how about your story? What you got? Yeah, uh, I've got free Telltale. Well, not free Telltale games, but cheap ass. <laughs> cheap, cheap, cheap is free. Cheapest free Telltale games and a bunch of them uh, in the latest Humble Bundle. Uh, so this just went up, um, and I, it should still be available when when people are listening to this. It like just started today. Yes. So so there are a ton of Telltale games available. I think it's like half their total library, it's, and there's more to be announced. It's ridiculous. It's like most of their modern um, inventory of games. Like yeah. from uh, from Walking Dead season one on, and like extending back into like oh Back to the Future and Poker Night and stuff like that. Like yeah, you can get Puzzle Agent, which is great. Oh okay, yeah yeah for Puzzle for twelve Agent, for twelve bucks. Uh, Sam and Max, Walking Dead. Well, one dollar or more to unlock you know what five games. Twelve dollars or more gets you um, everything, including Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead season two. Uh, and then if you pay more than the average of just under $8, you get The Wolf Among Us, um, you get Walking Dead 400 Days, you get Poker Night 2, you get Tales from the Borderlands, and they're, they have the big, you know, thing that Humble Bundle always does, which is they'll announce more games as the week goes on. Yeah, or after the first week usually. So by like, by the Tuesday after you hear this, there's probably going to be more stuff. And I imagine yeah. it's going to be something along the lines of like, hey, Monkey Island. Because, yeah. like, most of their modern shit is on here. Like, maybe there will be a coupon for uh, Minecraft story mode or whatever. But, like, yeah, this is this is most of their good shit. So, yeah. are all their modern games the whole, like, time dialogue thing? Pretty much. Uh, like, modern games, like, in the Walking Dead mode uh, from, like, yeah, like, Wolf Among, uh, Wolf Among Us, uh, Borderlands, Game of Thrones, all that, as opposed to uh, stuff that's, like, the Strong Bad game or uh, Sam and Max, which is okay. kind of more classic adventure game uh, inventory, um, you know, inventory rubbing puzzles kind of stuff. Let me see if there's, like, someone's made a mod for that to remove the timer. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think we've talked 
uh, on this show before about how it'd just be it'd be a very simple nod to accessibility to uh, give people that option. Yeah. yeah. Hey, obviously, it would take away some of the tension that the that the games do really well, but at the same time, mm-hmm. if you just aren't able to read that fast or you just don't like that yeah, level of stress. Yeah, I could see like, that, yeah. You know, it's it's like the it's like the uh no aliens in alien mode that we talked about <laughs> last week. <laughs> yeah. And how I I don't know why I didn't ask this last week. How how does that work? Like is there a game outside of that? You're walking around and you're touching stuff in order. Okay. Fair enough. Is that correct, Ben? For aliens? Yeah, for for uh, for alien isolation. Uh, eh, like the first half of the game, there's not much alien. Second half of the game, I think it would be a trivial game without the alien. But <laughs> it'd be pretty. But yeah. yeah, yeah. I I did kind of wonder from that. Does that mean that like all the killer robots are still there? Yeah. <laughs> I guess but those uh, but the like like being seen and touched by a killer robot is not exactly the instant game over that uh the xenomorph is. Is that correct? Um, yeah, they beat you up first, and then they kill you, so it's yeah. s- slightly delayed, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean... Also terrifying. Yeah. Uh, you know, pretty seems to be the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty's the point. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Vanity kids. <laughs> no, I mean, like, like for, 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 for that game and for that mod in particular. Yeah. Like, you know, somebody who wants to install that wants to go and see the pretty without uh, yeah. without without feeling the, the shitty, right, in their pants, specifically. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> I think that, I like, that's a better tagline to go out on. <laughs> I really, yeah, that, that, that's on my list. I need to, I need to play that game. Yeah. Uh, it shows up super cheap on um, PC sales and stuff. Ah, yeah, what the? Uh, like seven bucks, something like that, was what I saw it for last. Yeah, wait long enough. Uh, so for my story, uh, kind of keeping in the Dark Souls vein, uh, there is going to be a Dark Souls uh, board game coming out. Oh, uh, in I fact, saw that. Yeah, it is going to land on Kickstarter. Uh, it is being developed by a uh, by a, by a company called Steamforged Games Ltd. Um, and I do not know of anything else that they have made other than, you know, like their credential seems to be, they were trusted by, uh, from, and, uh, Bandai, Bandai Namco to, uh, to, to, to make this. And they're promising that it is going to be the most difficult board game you have ever played, which, uh, to me makes it sound like, yeah, I really need to like find somebody who has this, uh, so they can explain it to me while I play it. Because that would suck just to play it and learn it while somebody else was like waiting for me to make a move. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I know that doesn't sort of worries me. Yeah. Sorry. Go difficult. On. Difficult does not necessarily mean complex. So True. That, that's the that's the you know tightrope that they have to walk is to make it you know carry the the ethos of the games in terms of difficulty yeah. without doing that by making it just so rules intensive that it's hard to learn right yeah. you want it difficult you want it difficult to play not difficult to figure out yeah or there's even just the difference between like hardcore versus challenging hardcore being like punishing like hey there's one wrong move and you are dealing with a spiral of this for you yeah know. or 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 just being like um uh you know just being like you know oh we uh you know we we want you to you know if if you screwed up your build at the first level we want to force you to grind you know up to high levels you know you know yeah. just bullshit yeah roll a yahtzee to win (laughs) (laughs) that'd be some bullshit yeah i just i don't know enough about board games specifically this kind of like really like crafted tabletop kind of thing to 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 really comment on what i think it would be like immediately immediately my mind goes to something like uh like xcom but that is so heavily aided by the app Mm -hmm. that like (laughs) <laughs> like it wouldn't feel like the same game a without the app and b i don't know if it would feel like xcom without the app introducing that uh introducing that uh you know just a uh, time constraint to it right yeah well i know there's yeah. there's like you know a lot of the like uh the arkham horror games and there was it like betrayal on something 
that <laughs> that kind of do a blend of like RPG and board game that yep. you know that's kind of an established thing. Although I can't say I've ever heard of one that was like I. It seems like it'd be hard to do Dark Souls without it being heavily combat focused, which I feel like could be weird. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see what the how they build in difficulty like that in a board game format. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how they how they market it. Honestly, like, you know, this is going to come to Kickstarter and I assume they're going to be, you know, just explanation videos and rule sets and character samples and things like that. Like, I kind of want to know like what the what the loop of this game looks like. You know? Yeah, like that'll be that'll be really interesting. Yeah. They said something I it said something about like a um quick setup and long reveal. Yeah. So that makes me think there might be kind of a, a an element of random map building to it where you're playing tiles for <laughs> the the areas that you're going through or something like that. Yeah. Huh. Well, there's there's Oh, go ahead. I was I was I was going to say that sounds like a uh something else like there was a Bloodborne uh board game that was kind of revealed I think like last month or so that is based yeah. based around the Chalice dungeons and that would very much kind of <laughs> lend itself to you don't know what the tile next to you is going to be but like it's going to be determined as you walk into it yeah mm-hmm. that one that one actually interests me a lot you mentioned XCOM and the Bloodborne um I think it's actually a card game yeah uh is being developed by the same guy that made the XCOM board game mm. so I have very high hopes for that and, yeah. and did a little bit of reading on it the idea is like that you're kind of you have to work together with your friends to to get through it yeah. But at the same time, you're a little bit competing, too. So there's a lot of kind of paranoia or, you know, frustration between quote unquote allies. Like, you know, your most powerful weapon you might need to use to defeat a creature, but it's going to deal damage to everyone next to the creature. So, yeah. you know, it's like, guys, I have to do this. And they're like, no, you don't. Just give me an extra turn. Or, you know, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah. um, that that is very intriguing to me. Like the I think the games that are, are best always kind of pray not pray on that sounds so sinister <laughs> play with <laughs> these social dynamics uh more yeah. so than, than necessarily rule sets yeah co-opetition <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. i really dislike co-opetition i don't know <laughs> i'm down for it like i just i would rather uh i would rather share a goal and like disappoint people around me than uh not share a goal and just immediately be adversarial the entire way sure mm-hmm. i yeah I I know I, I I guess it depends how it's implemented. Like, uh, wait, what is it four sword style? I like the whole like we're going to implicitly encourage you to just screw everyone over. I don't like if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Ben is kind yeah. of the person who is kind of co most experienced with board games and tabletop games. Like, what do you what do you expect from this? What do you <laughs> what do you what do you think yeah. might come out of this? Either Bloodborne um, or Dark Souls. Well, so I'm totally familiar with, like, exploration games, and that's, like, the common mechanic, right? Is you have maps of, like, upside-down tiles, and as you move into them, you flip them over to reveal the world. So, like, that's, like, it seems to be a pretty tried-and-true mechanic if you want, like, an exploration feature in your game. But, like, yeah, the difficulty part, I'm not sure how they're going to, like, emulate that. That's going to be, like, the hardest part if they want to capture the Dark Souls game. Mm -hmm. Because it has to somehow be fair, too. Like, so, like, what I was saying with, like, a Yahtzee, like, that's totally difficult, but then there's, like, no skill involved at all with it at all. Whereas Dark Souls, mm-hmm. like, you know, there's this this sort of memorization process you have to go through, and you have to, like, master, you know, each of the bosses in order to progress. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of work that into a game mechanic. Yeah, how they would capture also, it. One yeah. dude, do, do any of the stories um, support, like multiplayer like i mean mean, obviously all of them have multiplayer as a feature but it's all kind of i you know know what i mean like not not peripheral is not exactly the right word but you you know what i mean they do okay okay yep Moving It'd be on. fun if you could invade yeah. other people's board games. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just kicks in your door. What the hell? <laughs> I've got to say that that actually like for like an a, you know an XCOM like a a highly uh, computerized board game that would actually be a really cool mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> just gives you an address. Be like invade this person. <laughs> oh, I meant I meant more online, but you know, you know, we can we can kick down doors. 
<laughs> well, it's just more, more of like a matchmaking thing. They they, they use the Tinder back end. <laughs> Dark holes. Uh, multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you, the listeners, a question. This is the uh, the old listener response kind of thing. And I asked this one this time because, again, this is a momentous day. We're waiting for Dennis's new baby. Um, and also Dark Souls 3 came out. But uh, uh, <laughs> here's the question. Counting days. Waiting in lines, reading or not reading preview coverage. Which game release in the past did you look forward to the most? Regale us with the tales of your most potent game boners. Yeah. I like it. It's mm-hmm. Beautiful imagery. There's, there's, some, there's some good ones in here. <laughs> yes, there are. Dennis, go ahead and get us started with uh, with Ollie. Yeah, Ollie says, I waited and waited for Metal Gear Solid. I'd seen an ad about 18 months before, and I was just salivating waiting for it. Um, it looked like everything I wanted a game and it was when I finally, and it was when I finally got it. Funny story though, I was going to get the game for Christmas and I had marked it a a 98% score in PlayStation power magazine (laughs) in a games catalog for my parents, uh, to see what and knew, know which one to get. Unfortunately, as a joke, I had also marked a game that got 2%, um, uh, called is no good (laughs) and and between. Between the two would make a perfect 100% game. Uh, and they got me that. <laughs> this is when I got one game a year. And I was gutted. Oh. You can't count on parents to get the joke, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think uh, I think Ollie is also the same person who recommended Is No Good for Abject Suffering. <laughs> because that story feels very, very familiar. <laughs> it's... At least it was, you know, truth in advertising. I mean, with that, with that name. Yeah. Like I've, uh, you know, I, I didn't look at what that game was, but like, is no good. Like, why would you name your shit that shit? Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, David, what does Kilo say? Kilo says, I had friends who remove everything source from my life while waiting for Dark Souls True. I broke within two days and barked up. Bought Dark Souls again on my Xbox. In my defense, it was on sale for something like five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Not so weak with Bloodborne or DS3. Still taking off the next three days for it. Yeah, nice. Huh? Still so 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 waiting. <laughs> I don't understand. Why would you get rid of the stuff leading up to Dark Souls Two, like the non Dark Souls Two stuff, like? Go and replay Dark Souls One. I, I guess. I guess maybe I'm speaking from a position of ignorance. Like I don't know the depths of your depravity, but huh? Hmm. But so, chime so, so, in yeah. on Bonfire Side chats. <laughs> so where, where do you guys like? Do you listen to the songs for the band that you're about to go see in concert on the way to the concert, or do you not? What I, part of our past has ever led you to believe that I've ever seen anything <laughs> in concert? <laughs> Ben and Cole. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking about this question earlier today because I, I find myself listening to the songs the day after the concert. Yeah. You know, that and then just like really enjoying the experience of like looking back on them live, you know? I, I listen to like five bands and those are the only five bands that I've ever listened to or seen in concert. And so like maybe I've listened to one or two songs, but it's not like, man, I got to study up in case they throw off to the crowd for a chorus. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not like that. It's just kind of like, oh, and most of what I listen to is podcasts anyway. and has been um, for my entire kind of concert going life. So, yeah. Can, I'm just I'm just imagining the uh, the scenario where, you know, the drummer's got the beat going in between and. They're like, all right, now I want everyone to quiet down. Be really quiet, except for you, Cole. All right, you're going to bring us into this one. Two, three, four. Hey, you, don't be redhead kid. Come up on stage. We're going to do this. (laughs) You are Courtney Cox, and I am Bruce Springsteen. And by Bruce, by Bruce Springsteen, I mean, uh, what's his name? From the Mountain Goats. (laughs) No, that's not going to happen. Come on. Uh, mm. Can we take a brief aside and guess the five bands that you listen to, Cole? Uh, sure. I'm Eagles. a parody of myself, so Eagles of Death Metal. All right, Foo Fighters. Oh, you took mine. Um, uh, Foo Fighters not so much anymore. Okay, oh, okay. Man. Ockerville River. River. Yep. Okay. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Yep. I'm almost out now. What's 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 your? Your... Goats, right? Uh, yeah, Mountain Goats is there. So we got we only got one left. 
Yeah, maybe. And maybe that was like my my flippant glib, like, I'm going to throw off this response. It's either going to be Modest Mouse or Sheer Water. <sighs> yeah. Didn't, didn't, didn't mean to throw that out. But like if I'm if I'm stepping in my into my car and I'm saying Ahoy Telephone, play me something, it's gonna be yeah. one of those six bands. So. <laughs> I would have gotten to Mountain uh, or sorry, Modest Mouse. I don't think I would have gotten to the other one. Mm, yeah. Well no, I I post a lot about sheer water on the social media. But mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, Kila. Uh let's see here. Ben, what does Sam say? Sam says, I spent a couple of years following the rocky development of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. It's not the only time I've done that, but it's one of the few times the game has lived up to the weight. Man, I really need to play all of Revengeance. I do, too. That was my exact thought. Has anyone played that on this podcast? I've played like the I... first two or three levels. Okay. I've watched the entire uh, Let's Play of it. Oh, wow. So it, it it was good enough that I was liter- literally willing to binge, binge watch... Uh, <laughs> someone else playing it <laughs> yeah no so so when we played uh when we played god hand for uh for watch out for fireballs like it opened up a flood of appreciation for platinum games within me and i like i, I went on like a little bit of a taste test of a bunch of their games but fuck yeah fuck yeah platinum nice the thing oh, I, like, I was about to be like didn't they do mercenaries but that's pandemic yes begins with p yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might as well um, Nathan writes in saying the release of Pokemon Gold and Silver was a major event for me as a child, uh, uh, as a child caught up in the zenith of Pokemania. During the year leading up to it, I spent all of my allowance and what seemed like every minute of my spare time searching for new information about the games in magazines, rare foreign cards, and whatever other media I could get my grubby mitts on. Contrast this with yesterday's release of Dark Souls 3 on Steam. I had been building myself up for it since uh, it was announced, and I've been calmly going about my obligations, having only played about two hours. It's absolutely everything I wanted it to be so far, but I guess my game boners just aren't as strong in the old age. And this is me editorializing, like most boners. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to imagine what Game Boner Viagra looks like. I mean, like, everybody hopes the next big release weed? is going to be, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> say weed? Yep. That, <laughs> oh, that has the opposite effect on me. Um, <laughs> no, that's a, uh, huh. Oh, I, I know. It just seems like uh, my, my, you know, most of the people I've known, it's like that and then, you know, spend their entire life uh, playing video games. I suppose. Yeah, no, no, just, uh, yeah, like, we, 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 it's it's difficult to get excited about anything when uh, when weed Good is on point. the table. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not that I'm an expert on this or, or anything. Um, huh. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a thing, definitely comparing and contrasting, getting getting excited about that stuff um, in the old days. Huh, Pokemon Gold and Silver, those were the days, weren't they? Mm-hmm. those were the days i uh, have pokemon silver for game boy advance uh but the save battery is dead oh mine too i'm heartbroken the worst torture yeah. yeah wait is that not a uh replaceable part no. i think i think it is like you you can repl- i think that maybe what? you can replace the battery but your your data is gone yeah okay. to be shit fair i i'm sure there is uh some like hipster uh you know go you know go to one of these retro game expos and there there is someone that will replace the battery for you yeah i was gonna say if 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 it's possible it's got to be like you know kind of breaking open the cartridge and doing something not yeah, like it's an yeah. exchangeable part the thing that's heartbreaking about it is I, I think that maybe that battery died before i got that third party game boy memory card that i unloaded all my shit to so oh, like man. my my level 100 zapdos from pokemon red is uh is probably gone forever now and that is a that is a sad thing Mm-hmm. Lives on in your heart. Yeah. Did I ever tell you guys my middle school password was Zapdos? Hmm. Nice. No, I, I you you know what? I actually I think that you did because mine was a very similar situation. Okay. Pokemon, man. You gotta pick your faves. Mm-hmm. Pick mm-hmm. your faves. Uh let's see here. Dennis, what does Amanda say? Yeah, Amanda says, I remember anticipating the first Neverwinter Nights game when I was young. I ended up joining the Hand of Torn, a multiplayer <laughs> gaming guild for the game in the Bioware forums in the months before it was released back in 2002. It was my first online forum, and though the game was kind of meh, I beat it and tried building dungeons using the editor they shipped with the game, which I think was definitely cool a, a cool early dungeon builder slash DM tool. That's great. 
That's crazy, the idea that guilds for this game formed before the game was even out. Yeah, well, Neverwinter Nights, that game had a ton of pre-release buzz. Like, I want to say, mm-hmm. like, maybe three, four years. Something oh, like wow. that. Something like that. Like, which at the time, like, that's that's a long time to wait for a game. <laughs> like, you know, that was that, 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 that was pretty long. So, like, mm-hmm. that was enough time for people to get real excited and start organizing stuff. Um you know, before the fact, yeah, no, like the uh, the Aurora engine, like the Aurora build and stuff, like that was all really good. Um, you know, yeah. campaign building stuff. I never quite was able to get into any of the actual gameplay, though, at least for me. Mm. I like, you know, I was I was okay with the single player campaign, but uh, definitely like Hordes of the Underdark was uh, was where yeah, that were was, really that was like pretty up. amazing. Yeah, uh, David, what does Geo Law say? So, it's not so much what he says, so much as a image he submitted. There's a very, very spooky skeleton, surprisingly looking incredibly chill on a park bench, uh, with with the caption, Waiting for Kentucky Route Zero, Act uh, 4. Yep. And that is why I didn't play Kentucky Route Zero, Act 3. Because I want all I want all five acts before mm. I continue getting invested in this thing. Mm-hmm. I love that series so much. Like art from that is uh, is a uh, background on all of my desktops, my, oh, ver- nice. my my various stuff. Like I love that series so goddamn much. I think they do amazing things with mood, tone, and just kind of this magical realism. Um, I've also been waiting for this thing to be complete for like three, four years now. <laughs> Does it ever go like full whore? No, it's just a vague sense of unease, like a okay. like, like a Twin Peaks in, but like not like Black Lodge Twin Peaks, more like Log Lady Twin Peaks. This implies that I was ever able to get through the pilot, but sure. <laughs> uh, you, if you watch the pilot, you know who Log Lady is. You're good. No, no, I I could not get through the pilot. I. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I just got incredibly bored. Well, that analogy wasn't for you then. It was for everybody listening. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know. Like, um, I, I I watched some of the uh, trailers for it. It looked really good, but I just, like, was at any moment expecting, like, the background to, like, unzip and, uh, I don't know, horrors to start flooding through. Are you talking about Kentucky Route Zero or are you talking about Twin Peaks? Uh, Kentucky Route Zero, Twin Peaks appeared to be some sort of, uh, like, high school, um, uh, like, Mean Girls-esque thing. Uh, I mean, it was it was a bunch of different stuff. This isn't the Twin Peaks cast, though. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Kentucky Route Zero, uh, very cool. I definitely resonate with what Geo Law posted here, this cool, spoopy skeleton meme. Um, let's see here. Ben, what does Christopher say? Chris says, Black Isles, Fallout 3. Sigh. <laughs> uh, Van Buren, you got that. You got most of that in uh, New Vegas. Yeah, maybe. Eh. <laughs> he, he did. Like, most of that turned into uh, New Vegas and the uh, and the DLCs. I'm not crazy, guys. Don't, don't take well, me away. Well, I mean, you might not be crazy because of this. Well, I mean, I'm definitely... <laughs> Well, do we want to start this now, David? <laughs> no. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I I can't I'm just man, I can't imagine being the person who was waiting for that. Mm. For like what, eight years? Wow. Too long. Huh. I'll pick up here with Josh who writes in saying, Pillars of Eternity. Is it is that is that what he says? Sure he, that's eternity. Yeah, Pillars of Eternity. <laughs> Mm. Um, I think that was the first Steam slash GOG game I play. I paid full price for. Not disappointed at the cost, even though I had uh, to put off a surgery for another couple of years. Smiley face. Huh. You you probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I figured this tumor's the size of a, a melon right now. Why don't we go for a watermelon and I can play my game? Yeah. <laughs> We we can forego the anesthesia. I, <laughs> I, 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 I the game. It'll it'll be great. Yeah, I sincerely hope you didn't actually compromise your medical needs for a video game. And if you did, and you feel like we're making fun of you, uh, we're not intentionally making fun of you. We're making fun of the absurdity of the uh, platonic ideal of the situation we've drawn up in our heads. I'm sure the actual reality <laughs> is quite complicated. 
segue, segue, segue. To World of War? <laughs> Is it my turn? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's David. With, oh, okay. uh, strangely, with David. David, what does David say? David says, World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King expansion. It was the first time I would be ready to raid from day one, and I was stoked. Wrath will always have been my fondest WoW memories, and the wait was excruciating. Hmm. Yeah, I never got Wrath, I don't think. I was never high enough level to get it. I think mm-hmm. I skipped Wrath and went right to Cataclysm. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, oh, the Dark Knight, um, like, arc was actually fairly worth playing. Yeah, it was like, uh, it was like late game single player content on Northrend. It was, it yeah. looked really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just, I, <laughs> what I wished was buying the, uh, buying the expansion got you just like a coupon to like play a version of that character through that content as opposed to like requiring you to have put in the hours and hours on one character to get to that point. Well, then yeah. you should buy Warlords of Drano because literally that is what it comes with it. <laughs> awesome. They're, they're, they're learning what people like me want. Great. <laughs> uh, well, let's see here. Ben, what does Eric say? Eric says Super Smash Brothers Brawl or Super Smash Bros. Brawl, excuse me. I remember <laughs> I remember waiting in line for the game and discussing it for so long with friends up until the release. As a funny story aside, for shits and giggles, me and a friend waited in line at the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 launch at a GameStop. And when I got up to the counter, I cheerfully purchased a copy of De Blob and nothing else. <laughs> That is the Wii game developed by I no the I was gonna say uh, no, I think that was like a Sega game or something. Yeah, I, uh, I own it for um, for PS3. Oh wow! Yeah, I haven't really played any of it. But... No, I was gonna say Spielberg, but that was definitely Boom Blocks. Yeah, yeah. and was also kind of lame. Huh? No, De Blob was a THQ. Huh? Yeah, go figure. I, <laughs> I like this idea though. I just. I want to, I just want to get like a, a video of everyone in line behind you's face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, excuse me, sir. I pre ordered this copy of. Wait yeah. for it. He has a group reaches for a cod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think, uh, I guess I'll, I'll jump ahead because this, this sort of is also mine. Uh, probably the main game I can think of doing like big, um, you know, this sort of thing would be, um, oh, Halo 2. Mm, uh, yeah. This this, this was sure. at the point where, um, I guess, Cole, Cole and I both uh, went to a very, very small high school, and um, I ran out of classes to take, mm-hmm. huh. uh, along with a uh, actually a number of my friends. So we just, like, got off of school shortly after lunch. Yeah, no, we called it Halo 101. We uh we we, we got off for the <laughs> uh for the post secondary enrollment option. Um right. and uh and we came to my house and played in uh, played Halo in the basement. Nice. Yeah, I was post secondary too, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was not post secondary, but I played a whole lot of Halo after school. <laughs> <laughs> well, after school was just a little bit longer for us now, wasn't it, Ben? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks so, for rubbing it in, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but uh, part part of where I was going for that is I I think uh, if I remember correctly, you know, we I went to the the midnight thing. I think the person in front of me uh, proceeded to just get there, pre order a game, and leave. <laughs> Period or a different game rather yeah a different game yeah no that was fun because i ended up uh like we got the games a couple weeks early actually and so i was i took the game home uh pretty much as soon as they were shipped in and <laughs> started playing it just like yo dog what up that's <laughs> because, nice <laughs> because i worked at that store oh man uh let- <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, who who did the last one? Who did Eric's? That was Ben, I right? Did. Okay. Uh, Dennis, uh, why don't you finish out with Graham? Yeah, I'll close this out with Graham saying, I mentioned in a previous multiplayer my hype lead up to the release and fan localization of Mother 3, but I also remember being super hyped for one of Terraria's huge content patches. Oh, wow. How much content have they added to Terraria? They have added a ton of content. Yeah, I was going to throw off to you, David. Which which one do you think Graham is likely talking about? I'm 
I'm not sure. Um, I actually stopped playing before, like, of most of the weird com, com um, content patches, by which I mean, like, like the, there was kind of a point where the game was, like, pseudo-complete, and then um, I know they added, you know, a couple more that were just kind of pure content. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if he means one of those, or there were also, you know, there, there were a number of earlier ones that really kind of filled out the game, like, uh, you know, added a, a lot of new biomes that were really cool. Uh, you know, like a lot of, like, jungle um, features, if I remember correctly, stuff like that. So I'm I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. But am, yeah. I, am I the only one that really ever got into Terraria? I was more of a, more of a Starbound guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. I played it for Did a you... little bit on Vita, but just couldn't stick with it. Sure. Did you see uh, uh, Starbound finally released? Yeah, it left early access. That uh, that kind of tempted me to go back into it, but I know what a deep dark hole that is. <laughs> That's, yeah. I like that games do, like that don't so much release as they do leave early access. <laughs> it's a but, much more accurate way to say it. Uh, you know, I think there's something there for you know everybody else was talking about these big box retail releases that they were waiting for, and then Graham comes in and says like, yeah, there was this content patch that I was waiting a super long time for, and. Mm-hmm. That that is a nice note to leave on because that is totally a reasonable kind of response to this question now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So let's uh, let's go around and uh, share some of ours. David, did you have anything else besides the uh, the Halo Two? Um, I'm you know I'm sure there was something, but that that's the that's definitely the one that sticks in my memory. Yeah, Ben, how about you? So I think the midnight releases that I was really looking forward to, I think uh, Arkham City and Halo 2 as well. And I think I got both of those like the night before they came out, like at 10 o'clock or so, Mm -hmm. like one of those things. And uh, of course, The Last Guardian, one day (laughs) that game might be fun to play. (laughs) (laughs) That is, (laughs) yeah, that is is a, a flame that burns eternal. A quiet ember, I would say. A quiet right ember. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, mine was actually all the way back on PlayStation One. Oh wow. Um, I so I was over at a friend's house, and I knew I was going to be getting a PlayStation One for Christmas. This was like in November or something. So I borrowed his copy of Spyro the Dragon, and for a month would just read through the guide obsessively. Mm. Like every little, you know, every little piece of it I had memorized. I could probably recite it, you know, word for word. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't a wide reaching uh, game boner that I was stoking. It was a very focused, specific one, and then I just <laughs> read the manual over and over. But it wasn't um, like, oh, where I'm waiting for this to release. I'm waiting for any possibility that this may enter my possession. Yeah, I'm I'm just waiting for the chance to play it. I'm re- I'm waiting for the equipment to play it. Yeah. Um, which it's really funny. I remember having my my mind absolutely blown because i didn't know that the controllers rumbled and so the first time i bumped into a wall as spyro and had the controller shake in my hand like i was like running around the house telling people about it (laughs) come over here feel this feel this yeah no literally um so yeah that that was a game that i was was incredibly excited for and uh, and i think in large part delivered Mm -hmm. whatever happened to that series uh i got handed off to different developers until it turned into skylanders run into the ground until yeah it was kind of reborn a little bit i don't think anything after three was any good yeah well that that was after it left uh what was it insomniac, insomniac. Zondi dog yep. yeah insomniac there we go yep yeah insomni dog <laughs> insomni dog <Insomni-dog. laughs> yeah <laughs> um so i've got a couple of like joke answers i remember uh uh bawling just crying profusely when uh, i was waiting for sonic 2 to release when i was like uh like five or so years old and my uh my stepdad told me like yeah no the store was out of it and they're never gonna have any it again and then like <laughs> he just <laughs> driving me home from like kindergarten or preschool or something and it was like finally no it's just like stop stop crying please like here it is it's 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 here it's it's in the dresser drawer please just stop crying <laughs> <laughs> this went horribly horribly wrong yeah um and i've talked about uh waiting for Mega Man legends and pokemon snap calling the uh the babbages every single day uh mm-hmm. waiting for them to get it in before the uh the games had any 
uh, total release dates, but I'm going to focus my answer here on a time when I was actually an adult and say uh, the game that I have uh, in my adult life most look forward to was the original Rock Band. Oh, yeah. really? Before yeah. It came out. Were you, 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 you were in, initiated to Guitar Hero at that point, though, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you remember okay. the dorms, right? Yeah, like, I, I had a I Guitar Hero. I remember uh, riding, uh, <laughs> taking a 45-minute uh, each-way bus ride to get Guitar Hero 2. Um, mm-hmm. And that was even a big one, too, because, like, I remember waiting for my mom to send me the demo disc for Guitar Hero 2 <laughs> that had, like, You Really Got Me and a couple of other tracks on it. But no, like, Rock Band, that was one that, that, that like, by that time, I had switched mostly from, like, magazines to uh, to following game um, kind of, like, websites like Joystick and stuff. And whenever they would release new tracks, I was like, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to add that to my iTunes library, and mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to it over and over again because I know that I'm going to be drumming along to this. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, and so like that was it came out on my 20th birthday. Nice. <laughs> you know? It's a sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that came out uh that, that came out on November 20th, 2007, and uh, I got that and the original Mass Effect on the same night and it was man oh man was that a was that a lovely time to be alive. It's a night of cool. Yeah. And uh it's never been quite as good since. <laughs> Bummer. Hmm. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it, it depends how you look at it. <laughs> you know, some people don't have the luxury of knowing exactly when they peaked. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I call it early. <laughs> that, way, that way I can be pleasantly surprised if I have a fucking kid or something. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, everybody, for responding. If you want to participate in these going into the future, go to Facebook.com slash The Level Podcast. And we're so grateful for everybody who uh, who watches those on Tuesday afternoons and early evenings and such. The Grind. Now it is time for The Grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the past week or so. Do you all mind if I go first? Go for it. it. Yeah. Uh, so, Ben, I played Until Dawn. Hey, yeah. I saw some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm sorry. I I, I didn't realize that I had uh, timed my playthrough to coincide with the time you were, when you were going to be out of town. But uh, that whole playthrough is uh, uh, kind of uh, archived on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see me fuck up and kill all but two people. <laughs> <laughs> I did so bad, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw maybe the first hour of it and nobody, no, not you didn't do that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, that sounded, you know, committed. <laughs> I really wanted to say a certain thing, but I'm not going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did okay. You did fine. No, no, it's, uh, yeah. So that is an interesting thing. So, Ben, you've talked about this before, but for anybody who hasn't listened um, since then, Until Dawn is kind of a uh, picture of heavy rain. Uh, the game was kind of wrapped in this uh, this treatment of a teen slasher movie that kind of mm-hmm. went through this roulette of different genres. Um, and it was filled with just as many unlikable characters as possible. Um, mm-hmm. So much so that you <laughs> do not know how anybody is friends until like eventually through the trials and tribulations. And honestly, mostly like you play in the you play in the characters, how you would want them to be played. They kind of grow on you like that is something that I see as a strength of this. Like, even though, like, I only started out really, li- really liking Chris and Sam, uh, the, 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 the nerd and the jock girl um everybody else. Like, I was like, well, no, like this is this is what I would do in that situation. Everybody kind of gr- grew toward the like toward the disposition that i would have wanted them to have which is mm-hmm. which is pretty cool you know like in a in a, in a story driven kind of way uh, it made me feel like i did my best and uh <laughs> what is it uh uh john colbert from the uh from the slack he uh he wrote in saying like yeah i was watching your watching your stream of this when you were doing this on twitch and it's like it kind of made sense the way you played this like it, it comported with, with what i know from you on the uh on the podcast. And then I don't, I don't say that to be like, Oh yeah, I come across as a good guy, but no, no, but more like, okay, like this kind of is, you know, it w- w- in the lack of information about whether or not you're supposed to be playing as the actor or the director, it kind of mm. becomes I, like a cross between a personality test and uh, like a, a rapid fire gut check to determine what your instinct is when you're under pressure. Mm-hmm. So, so what my, my takeaway from this being the true, 
you is that if we're ever lost out in the woods, I should just keep completely far away from you. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. I'm going to make you feel good, but then you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, it, it only felt disappointing in hindsight after I read that, like, yeah, you can, like, they're, they're only, there's only a certain number of people who have to die in this. Well, the, you have to, that, that, that's based on the assumption that in a, a game that is, you know, aping a slasher movie, people are supposed to live. You know? Right. Yeah. So that was something I was thinking about warning you about that, too, where it's like, even if you feel like you're doing bad in the game, just keep going. Don't oh, definitely. look up. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look up any reviews or anything like that. It, it was it was only after I finished it that I was, you know, going in and reading, like, the TV Tropes page to, like, learn about, like, the different characters and the, and the different points that they could die. And, like, there, there are a number of deaths in that playthrough that are just comical. There's one person who died because I accidentally attacked a deer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. How do you do that? <laughs> there was a target, man. I had to hit it. Uh, <laughs> so, so to what degree... I I don't know. <laughs> You're right there. Well, uh, I get. I guess uh, I I'd be interested to know, like, to what degree to to not have many of the people die or whatever. How um how like I guess a lot of these games, I'll I'll you know these or you know these sorts of things. I'll go about, go back and read like what you have to do for like the ideal situations it's just stupid like artificial jumping through hoops it is wait is it kind of that that sort of thing for keeping people alive or is it you know fairly logical there's there's certain gates in this game and there are things that feel like failure and so you might think that there is a way for you to not go through that but there isn't Right. So like the, the, there are decisions you can make that put you into a situation where it's like, OK, here's your last chance to not fuck this up. And if you're bad at QTEs, then that character is gone forever. OK, see that that QTEs are just bullshit in all forms. But I mean, you could have avoided that if you if, if you kind of like met the requirement to avoid that situation. But like, you know, yeah, the, but the, two those... wrongs don't make a right. I, I, but but I mean, like, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> they, 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 they do make a death but you know like the, the the game is never very certain about like whether or not it is a good idea to play it safe in a situation or to be aggressive to so, you know like to, to protect yourself you know do deaths mm -hmm. always come down to the qts or like so could i could i like make all the wrong decisions and as long as i'm really good at qts i'll never lose a character or no there's the, the, like there are decisions that'll fuck you okay yeah. And, you know, like, just like with any of these things, like QTEs will be, put, will be put in to make you feel like you have some, like, level of control. But all of that falls under the, uh, like, the banner of don't look too hard at this. Otherwise, it's going to expose the seams and make yeah. the entire mm -hmm. thing seem less worthwhile as a result. When, like, if if I had just left this, they'd be like, oh, well, this is a fucked up game where we're only two people out of eight lived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, and like, if I wasn't streaming it, like some people were, you know, chiming in in the chat saying, oh, if you had done such and such and such and such, that person wouldn't have died. And it's like, well, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was, that was my, that was my playthrough. And it's, it's fine because like most of them got their arc and especially the characters I cared about, they got their arc, you know? <laughs> So did you beat this game proper or how far are you into it? Oh, I beat it. It's, it's, it's okay. all, it's all on YouTube. Oh, it, it's okay. a, it's all on YouTube uh, dot com slash duckvtv. There's a there's a whole playlist for it. Okay, I only saw the first video then. So. Yeah. Okay. All no, right. like it's it, it's up there. Like it's uh it's it's like four parts. I think. Like once I found my momentum, I like I really like trucked through it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I dug it. I really think that so you know in 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 as spoiler free of a term as I can as I, as I can give it, I feel like they really squandered the potential of the story they were fainting toward. Okay, I don't like where the twist went. I liked the initial twist, but the double twist em up that happened right after that was kind of dumb. Okay, yeah, fair, yeah, and so that kind of made the entire. 
you know like rising action to falling action uh, uh it didn't it didn't have as much weight because like it stopped being based on the characters and their interactions with each other and it was more about the characters and their interactions with uh another with, yeah yeah with just this inclement force of nature around them yeah you know and just like that that isn't as interesting as like what they were building toward you know mm-hmm. So that was that was a bit of a bummer, but like these games for for as many problems as they have, you know, chief among them the fact that David Cage is kind of their uh, their patron saint, like they're still a rarity, you know, like this this has <laughs> you know, it shares bedfellows like it you know, it's it's all the way from Telltale to David Cage and it's hard to tell which one this falls more in line with. And mm-hmm. also like I can't tell if it's my better or worse angels that's making me like the David Cage-ness of this. <laughs> Um, but I had a good time with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I almost feel like I would have had a better time if I didn't stream it. It was fun Mm -hmm. to like play it and, you know, kind of like give comments and, uh, kind of like rationalize why I made each of those individual decisions. It's a bit of a bad streaming game, honestly, because there's so much dialogue. There's not a lot of like empty space for you to opine over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, and like, I don't like, I don't like people watching me fuck up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens you know <laughs> but uh but no like i'm happy i played it like i'm super you know super happy that i have it i don't know that i'd go back to it like within within the next year or two and play um, this time. yeah 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 because i because i know what a perfect playthrough would entail yeah I, and it's similar to heavy rain too where it's like the difference between a perfect run through and a failure run through mm-hmm. isn't i don't know if that's wide enough to justify playing it again yeah. you know yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that the the, the biggest difference be- between the between those two is like in a perfect playthrough, the characters, they live long enough to to kind of like mature and grow because of the uh because of the adverse circumstances that mm-hmm. they're thrust into. And, you know, this is something that people in the stream commented on. Jala, she was watching and she said, like, man, I just I couldn't play this game because of how unlikable the characters seem. Like I <laughs> I I pretty much came you know down on like being pro everybody in this because of the circumstances i don't know if that's some kind of perverse stockholm syndrome or Mm -hmm. that is uh you know just the you know just like the fact that they kind of grew toward the way that i played them but like they you know they they all had some positive stuff to them you know and like it's it's you know in a horror movie how it's like always like the the jock and the cheerleader who like die first or whatever when they're having (laughs) sex yeah it's like all the characters are those two archetypes, <laughs> yeah. and 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 even the nerds, like uh-huh. the, the, the 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 nerds are not as unambivalently likable as uh, as as they as you would expect them to be. Like I had a lot of sympathy for the Jock characters, yeah, mostly because like they got a lot of the limelight, they did a lot of like brave, selfless stuff, and the nerds, like aside from Chris, like man, Ashley come on like i started out liking ashley but they really lean too heavily on the superstition side of that yeah yeah oh and also every character in this game has like a very very like bland white person name and it took me i would say like (laughs) half of the like half of the game to figure out who each person was yeah because of that um yeah but that's until dawn. Um, it's a PlayStation Four exclusive, which is a bummer because I like I want more people to play this kind of game than mm-hmm. uh, than really are able to. But yeah, mm-hmm. let's see here. Uh, I don't have much to say about the other game that I put a lot of time into. I also started streaming Silent Hill for the room. Ooh. Oh, nice. Yeah. No, no, I just I want to start streaming more, not just because of my my tumultuous employment situation, but also because like it's fun to do. Like I had a lot of fun uh recording the Silent Hill episode um of the uh the stream and such. Like and yeah, like after the Silent Hill 3 episode of WAF, like people wanted to hear about 4, so I'm just going to go do this. And yeah. uh I still like that game an awful lot, but boy does it do a bunch of stuff wrong. <laughs> <laughs> boy oh boy but like in an interesting way you know just the, the the ghost enemies that will pursue you through walls uh that you cannot kill except with a limited item that you only get five of in the game um Ooh. yeah yeah uh, the uh uh kind of the fact that it is so 
each Silent Hill game, you play the regular world version, and that's in quotes, uh, of, of a level, and then you immediately play the other world version that is kind of more hostile, more uh, kind of combative. Um, you know, it's like it's it's version, so like level one sub A and level one sub B a little bit. Mm-hmm. This is level one, two, three, four, and then level one sub A, level two sub A, level two, level three sub A. Like it is a game that you take it and you divide it in half and then you have to go back and play through the entire thing again. Um, mm-hmm. Except this time it's a it's an escort mission, which is kind of unforgivable. But going back through this and playing it, like this is still one of my favorite games because of how how much it leans forward with the this is a fucked up illogical space. But like Mm -hmm. that first pass through most of these levels is very explicitly to get you to learn the uh, the like the geometry and kind of the rules of these different worlds. Right. The subway world, the the forest world, et cetera, before you have kind of like high stakes. Mm hmm. Yeah, like, I really dig it. And so, like, it's, again, it's like one of those things that, you know, Silent Hill 2 and 3, I can kind of say this is an unqualified recommendation. You know, like, play these because they're going to be really good. There's Mm -hmm. a class of things that's, you know, like the Dark Tower books, right? I can recommend but never defend. Like, I love this, but I would never say you should do it. Like, that you you should dedicate dedicate the time toward it. But, like, 4 definitely falls into that so far okay. like even on this playthrough like the first time i played it in several years um and all that's popping on there so like do you guys have any questions about the room i to be fair it wasn't originally going to be a silent hill game right it wasn't designed to be something else and they got ported over to a silent hill game that side of it is always overblown it was okay. still developed by team silent it was always supposed to be a guidance game um the only thing that changed was the fact that they put the silent hill name on it it was gotcha. it, it was it was always going to be yeah guiding like a side story kind of thing as opposed oh. to being like part of the main line. It was gotcha. it, it was always developed by the same team. Um it was always going to be put out. It was developed at the same time as Silent Hill three. Um yeah. Okay. Do you do you find that the the you know horror aspect of it is diminished with multiple playthroughs? Oh god, no. You always find something. Really? That you didn't notice before? Yeah. You always you always find something something else sticks out, and uh, this game specifically, like something so artful about this, is that it plays both claustrophobia and agoraphobia off of each other at the same time. Interesting. The way that it handles the sense of danger and kind of the sense of you know just kind of like constant tension versus your sense of like a safe space that is kind of like consistently eroded throughout the actual game mm-hmm. is uh, is tremendous like i can't think of another game that has done it as well as this cool yeah i was gonna say i don't want to ask too many questions because i actually have not played this game all the way through i've only played the first like third to a half of it oh shit yeah no that's uh that's good i I forget ben (laughs) didn't when you lived on glendora you lived in that house that had like the theater seating i was over there i was over there when you guys were playing like the first uh like the first bit of it yeah you know with 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 the really loud speakers and the big uh the big chairs and stuff Mm mm-hmm is, is is that when you played it when you saw yeah. it? Okay. Yep. Hey, remember when you did that thing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Haven't gone crazy yet. Okay, cool. Um, and that's pretty much everything. Like, I kind of want to save Dark Souls 3 chat until I've had a chance to let it marinate. Like, every Dark Souls game is going to be very hostile at the start. And mm-hmm. it's going to have a bunch of cool stuff that it's done. But, like, I haven't fully formed my opinion. Do you guys have any questions about DS3? Does it uh does it support the uh oh shield shield based combat? Yes, it is very much a Dark Souls game in that way. Like you can uh you start out with shields, uh depending on your build. Uh I started out, out as a pyromancer, which has a shield that doesn't have one hundred percent physical uh resist, but uh that doesn't end up being too much of a big deal because sure. you find stuff that gets up to like eighty, ninety, like from the first uh the first okay. vendors and stuff. It is not bloodborne in that it is, you know, it it is not asking you to be uh to be dodgy and rolly if you don't want to be. See, dodgy and rolly's fine, uh oh um try and die not not as not as good i mean that, that, that's just kind of something you, you sign up for mm. yeah dennis ben anything about dark souls 3 uh has the combat changed much at all or is it like the same old same old 
So it's uh, it's it definitely feels like Bloodborne a lot in terms of the pacing and definitely in terms of the graphics. I don't know if it's because I'm playing it on PlayStation Four um, mm-hmm. that it that, that it kind of like feels and looks the same, but it, it's it's very quick um, okay. and uh, it, uh, it yeah. So it, it, yeah, yes, it does feel it, it does feel very very, very Dark Soulsy, except uh, the the pace is kind of picked up. It's kind of closer to Demon Souls in that way, like even more so than uh, than Dark Souls Two was. Okay. Yeah. My question you... is: Have you had a bullshit invasion story yet? No, no, I outran an invasion actually. Uh, right before we, <laughs> right before we recorded, I was uh, making a last ditch run at a boss, hoping I could uh, hoping I could do a hail mary, but uh, no, no such luck. But uh, but yeah, like it didn't end up being uh, didn't end up being a problem. And I played like seven hours, and I've been through like three or four areas, like major ones. So, <laughs> how many bosses have you beaten? Oh gosh, I think like three. Dennis, you had a question? And you've only had one invasion in that time? Yes. Wow. That's I mean, Dark Souls uh two made it markedly harder. Like you or I guess you saw less invasions. Yeah, yeah. Like Dark Souls two saw them uh kind of take away the ability to immediately immediately get any kind of permanent invasion uh item mm-hmm. that you could use over and over again. And even this gets you the ability to get those cracked red eye orbs. Like it can mm-hmm. be one of your starting one of your starting gifts, and you can kind of get a couple of them, but, like, the fact that it is not <laughs> a permanent thing, kind of, yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> if, if you want to, like, I'm not going to condemn that because that's fun. I will. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's fun to go in and bully. Like, it's fun to be to be an agent of chaos. Like, I'm going to, I will defend that as, like, a part of the thing, especially in Dark Souls 1. Even if it uh, makes somebody have a harder time, it is... It, it it is something that I'm that I'm okay with as long as you're not hacking. Um but no, like it's uh like it it is like invasions, invading somebody else is, until you join the right covenant, a very unrenewable resource. And so like I think that because I'm still so early in the game, that might just be why it's been something that kind of happened and then didn't. Also everyone's probably playing the game themselves, you know what I mean? Yeah, right? yeah. It hasn't settled into like this uh this adversarial kind of thing. Although like Maybe because I'm on PS4, if if I was on Xbox One where a lot of people have been playing it for two weeks or so, it would probably probably be different. Um, but uh, but right now, no. Like I, I think that a lot of people like it's it's been ridiculous how easy it's been to find co op partners. And you know, I make I make no bones. Like the first time I go through a game, I will I will try as many times as I can to beat a boss solo. But I need to truck through this, so I will summon mm-hmm. for co op, and it is very easy to get co-op in these early days so thank you everybody who might have uh, done that my character's name is cole so you probably <laughs> saw me thank you i appreciate it <laughs> that's great yeah but that's everything it's been a it's been a been a very fruitful week um anybody uh who wants to volunteer to go next well i can since you talked about your teenage horror game i can talk about my teenage horror game okay uh which is i've gotten a bit further in danganronpa 2 Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, so this one's this one's been dark for a while. I've been I've been really kind of going through it at my own pace, um, but I've been enjoying every moment of it. Um, I I'm bringing it up this time around though because I actually had like a really thrilling gameplay experience. Oh, nice with the game. And that's not if you know if you're familiar with the game at all. That's not something that happens. <laughs> um, so you know the the game is really a visual novel, um, and there are some very you know limited interactive parts where you're kind of puzzling out the mystery uh and they you know they, they're dressed up in a lot of arcadey kind of stuff like you know there's a timer and there's an influence gauge and all this different stuff but really you know like if if you know your average piece of the puzzle takes two minutes to figure out for your average person the game gives you 10 minutes on the timer yeah so it, it's really really balanced to be a complete non-issue um unless you just get completely stumped and and that's where I found myself. Oh uh, wow! I had been I had been playing it late at night, and I will say, you know, overall, Danganronpa two, I've run into some more puzzle solutions um, that feel like a bit of bullshit than in the first game. Puzzle uh, solutions by which you mean the investigation side or the uh, the courtroom side? No, the courtroom side. Okay. So so for for anyone who hasn't played the game, there's a I forget what it's called, but it's a um. 
it's like a non nonstop debate. That's what it is. So basically, yeah. you're watching this scene unfold where people are people are talking back and forth and debating an issue. Do 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 uh, do 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 yeah. do do do. <laughs> yeah, um, and their their words are appearing on screen, um, as well as like other people's uh, kind of side comments that you have to kind of get rid of, yeah. uh, brush away, uh, and focus in. And then when you find you have you have quote unquote truth bullets, and you have to select the right truth bullet. And then fire it at the right phrase that has kind of a, a logical fallacy or an error in it, an inaccuracy. It's a contradiction uh, based on what you know about the case and what people have said so far. Exactly to to move the, the move the plot forward. So again, one of those segments, just just finding one contradiction, it gives you a very generous time limit. Um, and I was playing late at, late at night, and I was just completely stuck. Um, and it was it was a segment that was big enough that it wasn't i wasn't going to be able to like just brute force and try everything yeah um and so oh, can, go ahead. Can, can you give me a a little bit of a like an idea of which case you're talking about yes it was um oh i'm trying to think about how vague i should be careful based on... yeah Care. <laughs> if, if, if it's if it's too explicit i'll cut it but it, yeah it is the third murder it's... okay too general yeah um it well, now I've given away which one it is. It's a double murder. It's the first double murder. Oh shit! Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know what it is. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So, so, um, so I, I was just stuck. It was late at night. I was tired, and so I'm like, I just need to sleep on this. So I kind of, I kind of just hit the power button on the Vita and threw it to the side and went to sleep because I was in my bed. Um, and I woke up with the answer in my head. I was like, oh, got it. <laughs> like, you know, it's sleeping on it really does help these things. Oh, definitely. Um, so you know, I, I opened the game back up the next time I have a chance and realized, oh shit. I only have 10 seconds left on the timer. <laughs> oh no. And I was like, well, you know, and, and the stakes are relatively low. Like if you, if you run out of time, I don't know if you've ever run out of time playing you, one. You of just go back to the previous checkpoint. Like yeah. It's not it kind a... of it plays a little scene about how like everyone, everyone decides that the murderer is you, which is funny. Even if you were completely not a suspect and there's no way you could have been involved <laughs> because you do a bad job figuring out the murder. It's, uh, you, 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 you protest too much. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, it, it wouldn't have been the worst thing, but I was like, all right, I'm going to try to do this because when you, when you kind of um, brush aside those side comments that I mentioned, um, you get a little bit of time back. So you kind of have to, you have to fire at or, or shoot down these side comments as you're waiting for the, the right comment to jump in on, come up. And so like, I'm watching this scene unfold. And I'm like tapping furiously to knock down all this. <laughs> and like, I, I, just barely got it and i looked at the timer when i when i got it right i had less than a second left oh wow so really like this is totally not in the game shtick like it's it's intended to not really force you to be in that situation but it was like my heart was pounding at the end of it just because i i wanted to see if i could do it and, and managed to barely pull it off so uh, that was that was really exciting yeah no um chapter three that's where it gets really weird right yeah they start it's... throwing a lot of detail about the surrounding world versus just the the you know the island that you're on at you mm -hmm. and um yeah it's 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 gone to a really interesting place so now i'm it, cole will know what this is i'm in the strawberry house oh shit yeah the uh where they turn it into a room escape kind of thing yes yeah. so that's 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 the part i'm on now god that was such uh, a <laughs> i love this game so much yeah I, I will say the first time I talked about it, I, I mentioned that I felt like the characters weren't as they were all a reflection of characters from the previous game. Do you feel like they outstripped that? I do. Yeah. Okay. So they've, they've grown on me significantly um, and and they feel like their own thing now. So so credit to um, Chunsoft for that. Mm hmm. Um, the game does feel significantly more fan servicey than the mm. first. Um, it's from like the from the sexy stuff or or what? Um, the sexy stuff is one piece of it. So there's lots of just kind of gratuitous, uh, you know, imagery or whatever, uh, or, you know, innuendo, wink and smile kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it feels like the game is leering. If the game had a facial expression, it would be leering. <laughs> the of the time. Um, which, yeah, whatever. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit upset by, uh, what is it? The, 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 the female, uh, like the bunny character, the, the, the bunny Monokuma. Yeah. That, so that, that is played to me as intentionally upsetting. Yeah, like the just the, the the how 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 much she is kind of like juvenileized, yeah, as as like a like a sense of domination kind of stuff, like, and just the consistent abuse that she goes through. Like, I I know that it's creating a score of weird boners around the world, and yeah, that compounds yeah. my uncomfortableness at it. 
so that that at least like it felt like they're like hey this is meant to be uncomfortable this is meant to add to the whole sense of unease and everything whereas some of the other stuff is just kind of like ha ah, wink smile eh, eh. Yeah. um which you know whatever uh and then but the other thing that i that feels a little fan servicey is there's a lot of kind of fourth wall breaking moments okay um and monokuma that's kind of what he does the main the main bad guy is just seems to be very aware that this is a game and delights in that and makes references to that all the time so that's that doesn't feel as out of place but it's like there's a bunch of just random stuff that the, the characters will say that again it's it's the the you know the writers being like hey, get it see what i did there and yeah. see um so that that feels like they might have leaned a little too far in that direction does but, that get in your way does that get in the way of you appreciating kind of the main thrust of things there's only one time where it has and it was so in in the second game in in all in both the games you kind of get to choose which characters you have conversations with with which deepens your relationship with them and um then you know gives you more of their backstory yeah uh, in the second game it actually gives you a meter to see like how many how you know high the relationship is and if you get the relationship to a certain point you get a special skill to use during the uh the trial portions of the game yeah um and there was you know so i I maxed out one of the characters um it was a female character and then and there was like a really touching scene and like you know you kind of got to know about her past and she kind of let you know all this stuff which was it was genuinely affecting like it went really well um and then it gives you the reward of her underwear in your inventory for oh her. shit this is the uh the samurai right um no it's it's any of them so oh, any shit. character well let's say both characters that i have gotten the relationship gauge to max have yeah. given me their underwear as a oh, prize Oh fuck and that to have and it's not even the the second one it wasn't even like an explicitly romantic thing um that that you know the, that was the like culmination of her story or whatever but it's just like it, you know. I enjoyed the the story result that I got, and then it gave me this like icky prize that I totally wasn't looking for. And it's like, well, okay. I I do <laughs> just happened. kind of love imagining that this is that is simply a world where where that is the culturally accepted thing to do. <laughs> and I I just picture her like you know that the, there will be times even now as a as a thirty year old man I will be leaving like a holiday party and an uncle will come up to me and say like hey it's good seeing you and go out to shake my hand and then like palm a twenty dollar bill into my hand. Like yeah, yeah, it's like just buy, just buy some buy buy some gas on the way home. It's like oh, thank thank you, Uncle Kip. I'm you know, just, thanks. That's un, yeah. not necessary, but you know, it's a, it's a nice gift. I'm well, just I'm just well, picking. This... What's that? I said, well, I have this now. <laughs> yep. I just picture her like palming her panties into your hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. So the next character that I'm that I'm building the relationship with is a male character, and I'm very interested to see if I will get the same result. You know, I get the underwear. Yeah, so maybe I did, socks. I did um, Chiaki. I did Sonia, and then now I'm talking to Gundam. Okay, yeah. Oh, so these names, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and it's Chiaki. Chiaki is the ultimate gamer, and that that was another thing that felt a little fan servicey. It was like, oh, of course, the ga- gamer character is the yeah. one that's like, you know, partnering with you to solve all these riddles. No, she's so, great. Was, like, like, like her arc is amazing. Yeah, well, and I I think I I lucked into her actually seeming to be one of the main characters that I knock on wood think will stick around. We'll mm-hmm. see though. Yeah. Um, then I did Sonia is the ultimate princess. Gundam is the ultimate breeder, and he's a breeder of hamsters yep. specifically. <laughs> and he's uh, he he speaks in a very like dramatic overwrought yeah. way he's about bad, he's saying he yeah he refers to his hamsters as his four dark devas of destruction uh, <laughs> like, you know, the immortal stand aside while my deva you know the whatever. gates are yeah. open yeah <laughs> <laughs> so he's just it's just a very entertaining character to talk to yeah uh, we'll see where that goes but um so it, i spent most of my time talking about that that it, that's the only time where it's felt a little sketchy otherwise it's <sighs> So here, here, here's the thing, and I, I'm fully willing to put myself forward as being the being the dick here. Mm-hmm. But like when I see a game that gives you a woman's panties as the uh, as the reward for following a quest, like I kind of don't blame the creators for that. I blame the the fans they think they're playing to. 
I, I feel more disappointed that there is a hypothetical user who is who is like clamoring for that. Yeah, I. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's hard to assign blame because I'd be interested if I could somehow get the survey of like, OK, how many people are actually going for that versus just want the story? And what's yeah. the percentage there? Because I I want to believe that the percentage of high, is higher of people who enjoy a good story and, and like the kind of just overall craziness and weirdness that this game offers. Yeah. Because it, it is completely different than any other game I've ever played. And I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm continuing on with that. I'll, I'll probably do my next update when I beat the game. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the point when things go off the rails. You, oh, God. Um, <laughs> so the next mission, uh, Chapter 4, the one in the, in the Strawberry House, uh-huh. that is that is where that is going to happen ah, that is good. like that is not like me spoiling things like you're going to find it out pretty fucking quick nice. um and i don't know of a game that goes more off the rails than this one does <laughs> so yeah, like I, you know in 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 like kind of you take the the good the bad with the good right so it's got mm-hmm. these like weird fan servicey moments that I can I can leave take or leave, um, but there is just this overall weirdness that goes to the game that's just really yeah. fun and quirky and enjoyable, um, and and again makes the game so unique. So I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to that, and and I think I said when I when I talked about it the first time, like you know I the first game made me realize I need to give the writers more credit than I was, and I was I was denying them credit just because it was a <laughs> video game. I was assuming they weren't thinking about stuff well enough or didn't have intentions behind every word and weren't really stringing stuff together carefully. And yeah. so the second game when I was like, well, maybe this is just a bunch of repeat characters. Again, I, I kind of cautioned myself of, nope, these guys are good. And actually they, <laughs> they do actually have end goals in mind. Like this is, this is being, I'm, I'm trusting that this is being put together artfully yeah. and with intention rather than just slopped together. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, that's turning out to be true. Yeah. No, I'm 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 happy that you're uh, that you're kind of enjoying the mid game because that is that's not always the time when those like when when this series shines between the two of them like the the middle couple cases before you really get a sense of like what the hook is. Mm-hmm. But like I, I think that like it's going to be downhill from here in the sense that it is going to be easier to just kind of like continue. It's going to be more effortless to like resolve this plot of its own momentum. Yeah, it'll get more bingeable. Yeah, yeah, definitely, that's, man. That's that's me. Great. Uh, who wants to go next? I've got a fairly I, quick one. Uh, David, go ahead. Sure. So, um, strictly speaking, I haven't um, actually played anything. Uh, things have been a little bit stressful, and like the the two games I would have uh, considered playing or have been interested in have been uh, Salt and Sanctuary and uh, Dark Souls Three, and both of those are more stressful than what i need in my life right now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, so you're looking for some easy wins right exactly uh so but uh there's a game that i played a little bit ago that i've been meaning to talk about and that's uh infamous 2 that so is the uh, last one for ps3 right yeah say so the uh, so that again it was it's a it's a ps3 game right or are you talking about uh second son or uh, yeah i'm sorry the uh I, I feel like Infamous 2, well, that's that's actually what one of the things I was going to mention is I kind of, I'm, I'm talking about Second Son. Okay. Okay. I kind of regret not playing Infamous 2 just because there's a ton of tonal shifts and like, uh, you know, some gameplay shifts and like different things they're emphasizing with the story in the world. And I'm kind of interested to know how much of that, like, what what the lead into that was, if okay. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of interested also to know, like, uh, what the series did with the the weird uh, plot twist at the end of the original inf- uh, Infamous that seems to not be really something they're going to screw with with uh second son okay so i, I can't even remember the plot this for yeah. twist of the first game give me give I, me give me a broad stroke i guess if we don't care about spare that the that the main villain is you yeah so they, they, they pull a co- coder on you yeah 
Right. It, well, and just the the fact that they're just all of a sudden like, oh yeah, and uh, now uh, time travel is apparently canon. Okay. It's it just seems like that's something that would be kind of hard to walk back from. Yeah. So so Second Son seemed to be like to be more of a uh, more of a like a personal story. It's like you yeah. and your like mundane normie brother. And exactly. like looking at like how he deals with the fact that you are uh, a mutant, right? Yeah, and I would say my my overall feeling, it's kind of good and bad. Like I I definitely like uh, the fact that you know the fact that you're playing a character that has personality, and you know that that they are actually telling a story that like ha- has some merit. Yeah. Um, there's also a number of like uh you know semi secondary characters there's there's several other um i guess mutants or whatever uh that uh conduits that you uh meet that are all fairly interesting so far okay so like i really like that um i think i think it's a much much more legitimate story much better game legitimate uh, like in what sense just in terms of like, I mean, the I feel like the first game was almost was almost a parody of like stereotypical like power fantasy like plotline and character. Okay. Uh you know, you know, even even you know, even that, and and you know, it this one just seems more more original. Okay. Um, yeah. The uh, what I do, the thing I don't like about it is I kind of wish they had uh, done a little bit more with the characterization of um, uh, your character's brother. Um, in in particular, um, I uh, it seems like a lot of the time is basically. A lot of his role is basically to kind of give voice to kind of the the racism against uh, conduits or whatever, okay. and that seems unfortunate because to a certain to a significant degree, his overall worldview probably is actually has some merit to it, and so it's kind of frustrating that they tend to just uh, you know where rather than actually have nuance to it he's just pretty much always wrong hmm. if that makes sense yeah so i don't know enough about about this character to know like to to to, to be able to like comment on whether or not like what to comment on, on what his worldview is so can you give a little bit more detail well it's just you know you know you're 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 you know kind of the setup is your your character is kind of, kind of the you know the you know, rebellious, you know, punk younger brother that's, you know, uh, you know, all about, you know, very, very strong, you know, uh, kind of anti-authoritarian views, uh, you know, you know, it's a troublemaker, that sort of thing. Whereas your, uh, the older brother is, uh, the town sheriff and, you know, actually has a job and is apparently the, the one that supports both of you and is, you know, it's kind of kind of this stereotypical, you know, older brother, younger brother type thing. Does he and, physically abuse you or emotionally abuse you? Wait, did I say abuse? No, I'm just doing a callback. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got that. It took me a while. Um, but no, um, so, and in, in that, like, a lot of the times when he calls you out for just kind of, you know, doing dumb stuff and you know you know when when he's the voice of reason he's probably right uh similar similarly um you know i kind of like that for example er, early on um there's basically a, a situation where like uh you you save um some uh uh a bus full full of people and then like they won't let you on the bus to, uh, you know, ride into town. Uh, and he's, yeah, and he basically says, like, look, like this, I'm not saying this is right, but you can shoot fire. People are afraid of you. 
And I, and I feel like it's kind of like he kind of has a point that like it may not be right that, you know, the uh, average person is terrified of you. But at the same time, suddenly the world is full of, you know, people that can, you know, call down lightning and shoot fire and, you know, create hell demons. Hmm. This is where he says, I can shoot smoke. If you're going to be powerless, you should at least get it right. Right. Uh, yeah. And so, and so the, but, but the problem with the character is it seems like the way it's mostly written is like, you know, oh, you know, you, you know, you need to be realistic. Here's some things. And besides, they're, they're just some bio terrorists anyways. They're not good people. Like it's, I don't know. I feel, I feel like they kind of squander it. Hmm. But so, um, so that's whatever. On the other hand, I really like the setting. I really like the um, selection of powers. Uh, actually, kind of what Dennis just said. I really like the fact that they went with your know, power being smoke as opposed to the uh, less creative fire. Hmm. Um, I like the fact that pretty much all of the powers in the game tend to be very, uh, very urban. Um, in terms of you know they all tend to be like like uh the main villain her power isn't uh isn't to control stone it's explicitly to control asphalt oh wow oh interesting <laughs> so so like i i like i like that sort of uh you know that sort of um i i know it is <laughs> kind of specific seems almost kind of like a modern update on you know on the uh you know the stereotypical like elemental hero yeah well i mean like in the in the expansion to second son uh first light they've got a a a woman uh the main character she controls neon right and she's actually when, when i mentioned some of the secondary characters that are pretty compelling i'm Fairly certain that there, there, there's a girl that you meet that has the neon powers. That, so I'm like 99% certain it is the same character. And <laughs> that's, you know, filling in her backstory more. And she's a really uh, neat character. Um, especially because she's initially incredibly creepy. Hmm. Um, How so? Like unpredictable or? Um. <sighs> She's uh initially comes across as basically a serial murderer by way of the Punisher. Okay. Huh. And yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh what one I guess with this, why one of the things that I do kinda like that's a re- really common um or really small change but that at least for me i feel like is really effective is uh the characters don't really uh euphemism what you're doing it's very explicit like that when you're using your powers they 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 don't do the batman i don't kill it's like you're killing people yeah yeah. (laughs) so i yeah i i really like that so do you think that you're going to see the series to the end um. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely definitely planning on it. Um. Okay. It it does. Um. It doesn't seem like a game that at all makes that difficult. Um. It's it's kind of weird. Most most of the side um side missions are just really really are are almost like mini games. Hmm. Uh. And there's actually not that many primary missions. So there, there's a significant degree to which the game is just having fun running around doing stuff. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, uh, uh, one child I really like is Grant, consider this was a launch title for the game. So, um, for the, with, for the PS4? Or, yeah, I'm sorry, a launch title for the PS4. Uh, with the showing off the uh, six axis or whatever, uh, one of the mini games is you basically hold the, um, uh, hold the controller uh, sideways uh, and use the trigger like a um, spray paint uh, can, and oh, then like yeah. fill it, fill in stencils and stuff. It's using com- the, uh, the motion control. Yeah, yeah, it's completely contrived, but it's it's actually a lot of fun. That's something I didn't talk about. Do you mind if I dip back into sure. into until dawn for a second? 
Sure. Um, there are QTEs, but they're the exact opposite of QTEs in Until Dawn, where it tells you hold as still as possible. And mm -hmm. you huh. have to not move the controller one iota or else your character is going to move and make a noise and somebody's going to come get you. Do you get enough <laughs> warning to be able to just set your controller down? Uh, you know, I, that, that never occurred to me because <laughs> I sit in a leather rocking recliner and some just just in the interest of always keeping moving, I rock constantly. And <laughs> even though my hands are locked, my wrists are locked, my fingers are not moving one inch whatsoever. The rocking would uh, make me lose some of the encounters. Sure. Yeah. But I would have been a badass at uh, filling in these spray paints, I suppose, due to my <laughs> rocking nature. <laughs> Seems legit. Yeah. So, so uh, the last thing I would say is uh, just shout to some of the uh, actual gameplay. Overall, it's really solid. Uh, one thing I like is that they make the uh, the non lethal take downs. I'm assuming lethal ones if you play the uh, evil side. A very explicit part of the um, gameplay. Okay. Uh, so, um, oh, you. Fairly, fairly early on, get a um, power that um, automatically starts your uh, healing uh, whenever you uh, do a non-lethal takedown. Okay. And similarly, all of the uh, powers have uh, a number of abilities that make it very easy to get these. So, like, uh, smoke effects can basically, like, the smoke will cause people to start coughing up uncontrollably and you can walk over and just take them down um the uh neon you can just kneecap people oh uh stuff like that so it's it's very explicit like a lot a lot of the the tactics uh tactical aspects of the gameplay is uh you know doing these things and so it's really cool yeah so huh yeah. me good stuff i recommend it Second son, infamous. <laughs> ben, round us out. I don't have too much because I've been out of town for most of the last week. Yeah, you were, got... in, uh, you were up in uh, Seattle, right? Mm hmm. Infamous son in high definition. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, but I did get a chance to play NES Remix. Oh, shit. Yeah, I talked about that a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, so that was pretty interesting. Uh, I basically realized that I think I'm more of a N64 and beyond sort of gamer than an NES gamer. Oh, wow. Like, I, I mean, I enjoyed it. I played the games or whatever, but, like, I don't know. I didn't really, I wasn't, you know, like, I did not have a game boner over it. I will put it that way. <laughs> um, like, like the stuff, so were you playing it on Wii U? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. the person who I was visiting had that console, and so uh, I, I played a couple of the Mario ones, and I played, I think, the Donkey Kong one, yeah. where there's, like, a spotlight around you. <laughs> yeah, where you can't see the uh, the fireballs or the barrels coming at you. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. Yeah, no, it's yeah. great. Like, NES Remix is amazing. Yeah, I don't, I don't I, mean to undercut you, Ben. But no, no, it's I, fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it came down to more, it was just not for me sort of thing, because I, I just don't think I'm an NES gamer at heart. Yeah. Um but I I did get a chance to play uh Dr. Mario as well, but mm. the Luigi version of it. So Dr. Luigi. Um <laughs> Yep, that's pretty good. That was uh yeah. is, is so that, Obamacare. Is that Wii U as well? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because I, um, I, I I played the uh like the new three DS one, but I I don't know if that is Dr. Luigi or not. Okay. Like, like the doctor, the, like the doctor, the, the doctor Lu Luigi one. They give you different sets, uh, like different shapes to drop, right? Correct. Yeah. You're dropping L's, I think, all the time instead of pills. Yeah. So it's basically two two by one pills, but they're arranged in the shape of an L. Yeah. And so instead of um, if you get combos, instead of it dropping more pills on your opponent. Hmm. It changes the colors of the L pill that's being dropped on their screen. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if nothing happens, it's just a uniform color, and you can kind of plan around with that. But or it might be split in half where it's like horizontally, so that it's kind of easy to play somewhere. But if somebody uh, like clears multiple things on their screen, it basically splits into four different colors in one. So it's kind of like a bomb, pretty much wherever you put it. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So that was pretty interesting. That was a mechanic that I was not able to wrap my head around the 30 minutes to an hour that I played it. So yeah. it, was, it was pretty cool. Were you playing this competitively against like somebody who kind of knew what was up? Um, yeah, but like I think we were at equal footing. They had played it before, <laughs> but... You know. But they didn't have the pure Dr. Mario chops that you had. That's a, that's exactly right, Cole. Thank yeah. you. I was I was too humble to say it myself. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this like you are you you are a Dr. Mario assassin. Like you're <laughs> you are a Dr. Dr. Kavorkian slash Mario. <laughs> I I am decent, but I will admit that I have a limitation where I typically only play on slow speed and not normal speed. Uh-huh. So if somebody's really good at normal speed, they will kick my butt all day. But no, no, like it is. I think that speaks to more your 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 pure calculated planning instinct. I think that you, <laughs> you know, get given the opportunity, you will lay out any number of nooses and traps for somebody else to lay themselves into. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is a game all about delayed gratification. Yeah. So, yep. No, no, I've only played against you once or twice, and uh, I know I know enough not to fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I mean, it was cool to play the game, Dr. Luigi. I don't know if it has uh, the same hooks that Dr. Mario does in terms of like it being really addictive and really fun to carry out plans, but uh, it's a it's but, a yeah. it's a cool variant. I like yeah. uh, so on the uh, on the 3DS version, like the one you get from the eShop, it kind of goes back and forth between uh, challenge levels from regular Dr. Mario move sets and the Dr. Luigi move set, and okay. both of those are really satisfying because like Dr. Luigi is all about those combos. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, that's interesting. Um and you do have the ability to go back and play the classic version in Dr. Oh, Luigi as well. For sure. Yeah. So that's nice. And uh I think one of the interesting mechanics of the game too is just listening to the music that they have because <laughs> I feel like the music is a critical part of the Dr. Mario experience. Oh for sure. The, the fever and chill. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh outside of that, I've also played some more Rocket League, but no, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to just be a common staple, I think, for <laughs> many weeks to come. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's all I got. Cool. Um, does anybody have any uh, thoughts they want to get out or questions they want to ask before we button it up? No, I think I'm good. My question is, why don't we button it up? Um, well, I don't know. Like, I, just, <laughs> I like talking to you guys. We might as well. No, we've been going a little bit long. So can we button it up? <laughs> Ben. Oh, he's, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay, cool. There we go. The credit. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to level number 146. We're so grateful and so appreciative for everybody who's tuned in. It uh, means the world uh, to me personally, and I'm I'm sure to uh, to, to the assembled panel here. Um, it's, uh, yeah, no, it, it, it is a wonderful part of our lives. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking of things that you can do. This is a very important week for the network, uh, just because Dark Souls 3 has come out. The, uh, the, the Dark Souls 3 first impressions cast probably hasn't gone up on, uh, on Bonfireside Chat. But, uh, if you are a fan of this show in particular, um, and the network in general, uh, please go and tell your friends uh share us on twitter share us on your blogs all of those kind of things we would love to bring nor uh, more new blood in uh just because that is uh that is the only way we really grow we don't advertise we don't do much of anything and uh if you are <laughs> well no like just in terms of like we hardly record this podcast oh no no like like 80 percent of them never make it out to the public like this <laughs> this is a daily show we do this every day oh, um, but only but only one goes out per week i pick the best one um <laughs> as as hard as that might be as hard as that might be to believe uh no, no. We, just, those aren't episode titles those are episode names that we post the slack yep. <laughs> so on its own yep <laughs> but speaking of that slack we have that patreon page and that is uh that is so wonderful and for me becoming more important personally uh and you're going to uh by the time this comes out you're going to see uh more tiers uh for different shows and things like that that are uh uh, kind of being uh, being put forward uh, as uh, kind of like things we want to do to make this network more of a uh, more of a force and more of a presence and uh, just kind of more of a uh, more of a fixture. There we go. I think those are three synonyms uh, that I <laughs> feel comfortable putting forward. But that is uh, duckfeed dot tv slash the level or patreon dot com slash duckfeed tv. 
all of those and uh, telling a friend and those iTunes ratings and reviews at this pivotal time. Let us make this hashtag duck life. <laughs> that is life with a Y. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's <laughs> duckly F-E. Yep. Um, am I missing anything, fellas? No, it does it. Okay, cool. Um, so I have been Cole Ross. If you want to find me and the things that I write, uh, it is at Cole Ross on Twitter. That is K-O-L-E-R-O-S-S. That is not an invitation for everybody else to spell their thing, but if they want to, they can. I'm Dennis Furia on Twitter. At D I'm... Furia, F-U-R-I-A. Cool. <laughs> I'm David Money Smith on Twitter. Uh at moneysmith777 m-o-n-e-y s-m-i-t-h 777 Ben Merkel at Merkelizer <laughs> on Twitter you spell that g-o-o-d-n-i-g-h-t <laughs> <laughs> fantastic and uh, stick around for some titles as we are one to choose after the outro music <laughs> Okay. Uh, does anybody have uh, have a title that they want to throw in? Um, I had a couple, although I don't know some of these. I don't know to what degree they need to be direct quotes because I kind of just wrote down what I heard just, or remembered. Just just give me what you give me what you have, and I sure. will uh, titleize them. Sure. I've uh, Parenthood is play to win. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna make you feel good. Then you're gonna <laughs> die. I have that one as well. <laughs> uh, the double twist him up was dumb. <laughs> and bland white person names. <laughs> <laughs> that one's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so here's how long it's taking me to type these. Uh, so after I'm going to make you feel good, then you're going to die. What was, uh, what was the third one? The double twist him up was dumb. Okay. Okay, and then uh, the last one, uh, bland white people names? Yes, I'm white person, but I, I people, whatever. Okay, cool. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. yeah I've got a couple. Oh, go ahead, Ben. I got flavor profiles of pain. <laughs> okay. I got dark holes, the Tinder back end. There's a colon <laughs> in between dark holes and the Tinder back end. You can either spell <laughs> colon or put a colon, whichever one. <laughs> um, a quiet ember uh two wrongs make a death try and die and game boners <laughs> this is we're gonna have like 60 titles because i i have three and they're none of them have been brought to light yet <laughs> okay. okay uh sh- share yours yeah i've got pretty is the point okay swipe left for co-op and insom- insomnia dog. Okay. Okay, and I have uh, I have three, uh, two of which were uh, were already shared, but I will say all of them. Uh, touching stuff in order. <laughs> uh, pretty is the point, and a quiet ember. Oh. I think having heard it, I have to go for bland white people names. I like bland <laughs> white people names as well. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> David, any uh, any any dissent? No, no. Oh, okay, cool. There we go. 